we end up all living in houses that are built a certain way? Just look around, like how did we get here? A lot of people now are, are think are realizing that what it takes to live is different than what we've been told we need to live. And that's an amazing epiphany. I've been working with old buses for now almost 10 years. When somebody asks me to build and design a house in a bus, that's an honor. The whole reason I got started on this is because I had a problem. I needed a place to live. I wasn't going to have the money to buy a house in the foreseeable future. I knew buses. This is a lot of space. I knew I could live in it. And I was like, okay, I'm going to build a house on a bus. So I took all the ideas that I'd always wanted to do, to cut the roof off and raise it, to cover it with solar panels, to make the interior really nice with a full kitchen and shower and, and bathroom and to have like a folding bed. I just said, well, no matter what it costs or what it takes, I'm going to do it. I spent around $27,000. When it's really cold out and there's a blizzard and I'm in here like huddled up warm, baking cookies in the oven, that seems pretty domestic, but it feels like an adventure still because this is like the premise that my life happens in. It's in a school bus. I like being in touch with my energy consumption and I'm always checking my gauge and seeing where I'm at. But I really wanted to just continue living the life that I live. Playing electric guitar for hours, having my laptop on and just not worrying about that was important to me. A lot of people don't realize the sheer awesomeness of solar power, <laughs> especially for something like this. This bus has 1800 watts of solar panels on the roof. This is like magic. They're making power right now, you know, totally silent. Just there making fairies out of the air turn into little electrons and they live in the batteries. I don't know. <laughs> I've got a tank. It holds 46 gallons, which is enough for me to live like everybody else for about a week to 10 days. Being in a bus and, and taking a shower or just brushing my teeth, it's, it never gets old. <laughs> I can be off-grid anywhere. If I had water, I can go pretty much indefinitely, which is a lot more functional than most tiny houses. What dimensions do we want? I started this by myself, and I am so lucky to have early on met Ben, who is a really talented carpenter, but he's really just a really capable and creative maker and builder. His background is in hand-cut joinery and timber frame construction. He's a master with chisels. We problem solve together and it's really awesome. In Denver right now, tons of buildings are being torn down or gutted and there's a lot of material being thrown away. Ben's the kind of guy where if he's driving down and he sees like a piece of wood in the dumpster, he'll pull over and look at it. Everything that we do is built with an intention of it being as strong and as thoughtful and as serving the purpose that the owner of the bus wants it to. And that's not possible, you know, when something's being mass produced. We definitely build for people that are unique. They're creative. They think outside the box. And I think fundamentally they're adventurers. How's it been? It's the dream. <laughs> Right now, there are four people living in homes I've built. I'm still new to this, doing it for other people, and they take a long time. The quickest we've done one is six months, but hopefully, you know, by the end of the year, there'll be a couple more. It's most exciting to me when people I'm building for want to be off the grid. That means that that person is about to get really in touch with exactly the footprint that they're being alive on this planet makes. 
because you're gonna be responsible for carrying that footprint around with you everywhere you go, which is an experience that almost nobody gets when you live in a house that's connected and your electricity comes in on wires, your water comes in through pipes and your waste leaves through the sewer. It's amazing. To me, it's sacred. I'm making a space that somebody is going to be having all those life experiences that come along with just being alive. You know, falling in love, getting into fights, getting excited about things, being sad, reading a book, cooking a meal. They're all small things, I guess, on their own, but when they all happen in the place that you're building, it's like building the stage that like somebody's life is going to be happening in. <laughs> There's so much pressure to work hard, and everyone buys into it. Things get more expensive. We need to make more money to buy more expensive stuff. Even houses are more expensive now. A $600,000 mortgage is insane. I need to like screw all my pictures to the walls and stuff. It's really sad. All my friends I talk to, they're like, how you been? I've been so busy, it's crazy. I'm like, it is crazy. We should be out like being alive. I love knowing that from where I am, I could walk five or six feet, sit down in the driver's seat, start the bus up and just start driving. That's always what I dreamt about when I was getting into this. And that kind of very perfect freedom of feeling totally self-reliant and self-contained, wherever you may be, you have everything.